Hi, everybody. Just for fun, let's do the case of graphs on four vertices and try to count those. So the problem is we have, we, we think about um, four points and we think about connecting them by lines. So we'll label the points one, two, three, four. And the question is, how many different ways can we connect up the points to the lines in such a way that if we rearrange the labelings of the vertices, uh, and it, we count them the same if they just differ by a rearrangement. So for instance, the one I've just drawn would be the same as this one, where instead of going one, two, three, four, I went one, three, two, four. Um, this actually may be the same. No, this one has an edge connecting two to four. This one does not. But up to that, if you rearrange the vertices, they're the same. And that's what we want to count. So the strategy is similar to what we did with the three vertex case, but it's a little bit more complicated. So the underlying group that we're interested in is S4, which has 24 elements. And the there are six edges that are possible. The edges, we can label the edges by saying the numbers of the vertices that they join. These are not transpositions. They're um, 2, 3, 2, 4, and 3, 4. These are the possible edges, and there's six of them. And the way to think about this, like before, is instead of thinking about coloring these edges, we're going to think about either having them be there or not be there. So a, um, a graph is going to correspond to assigning to this set of six vertices, sorry, this set of six edges, a plus or minus. The plus meaning that it's there, the minus meaning that it's not there. So for instance, this one, it has a plus on one three, a plus on three four, a plus on one four, and a plus on one two. So that's one, two, three, four. It has a minus on two four. So it has plus on one two, plus on one three, plus on one four, plus on two three, plus on three four, but a minus on two four. So it has five of the of the six possible edges. And um, the group S four acts on the edges by permuting the ends. So for instance, suppose we take the um, the cycle just for the sake of discussion, one, two, three, four as an element of S4. So what does one, two, three, four do to the edge one, two? Well, it takes one to two and it takes two to three. So it takes the edge one, two to the edge two, three. And how, where does it take just for the sake of discussion one, four? Well, it takes it to two, one. So that's the action of the group on the edges. And the question we want to ask is, how many, if we consider the, there are 2 to the 6th equals 64 labelings with an S4 acting. And the question is, how many orbits? Because each orbit is a family of graphs which are the same under the action of S4. So um, we're going to use Burnside's theorem, which says that k, the number of orbits, is 1 over the order of g times the sum over g and g of the number of fixed points, where here xg is the labelings fixed by g. And we're going to make a table, similar to tables that we've made before, where we're going to list the elements of S4, and they are the identity, transpositions, products of transpositions, three cycles, and four cycles. And there is one identity element. There are six transpositions. There are three products of transpositions. There are eight three cycles, and there are six four cycles.
we've seen these numbers before, and they add up to 24. 14 and 3 is 17, and 1 is 18, and 6 is 24. And what we want to compute here is the number of points, number of labelings fixed by the identity. So for E, for the identity element, the answer is 64. All possible labelings are fixed by the identity element. What about 1, 2? So how do we see this? Well, if we look at the possible edges, let's make a little table here. There is 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 1, 3, 1, 4, and 2, 4. These are the six possible edges which can be assigned a plus or a minus. How does 1, 2 permute them? Well, 1, 2 leaves this one alone. It takes 1, 3, it sends the 1 to 2, but leaves the 3 alone. So it sends 1, 3 to 2, 3. So these two get interchanged. It sends 2, 3 to 1, 3. It sends th leaves 3, 4 alone, but it sends 2, 4 to 1, 4 and 1, 4 to 2, 4 because it interchanges the 1 and the 2. So if we were going to assign pluses and minuses in such a way that the labeling is invariant under this action, we can put anything we want on 1, 2. Whatever we put on 1, 3, we also have to put on 2, 3. Whatever we put on 1, 4, we have to put on 2, 4. And we can put anything we want on 3, 4. So there's 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, or 2 to the 4th, or 16 possibilities. And we're going to get the same answer for any transposition, because any transposition is going to exchange two pairs of edges and leave two alone. If you looked at, for instance, two, four, it's going to leave two, four alone and one, three alone and pair up the other two. Okay, what about a product of two transpositions? Well, let's work that out. Let's look at our six edges. And let's ask, what does one, two, three, four do? Well, one, two, three, four leaves one and two alone. It sends 1, 3 to 2, 4. It sends 1, 4. 1 goes to 2 and 4 goes to 3. So it sends 1, 4 to 2, 3. And it leaves 3, 4 alone. So, and we can just check. It sends 1, 4 to 2, 3, for example, and it sends 2, 3 to 1, 4. So what, it has the same pattern as the other, as the single transposition, namely, we can put anything we want on 1 and 2. We have two choices for these pairs, and then anything we want for 3 and 4. So again, we have 16 possibilities, 2 to the 4th. What about a 3 cycle? Well, for a 3 cycle, how does 1, 2, 3 act? Well, it takes 1, 2 to 1, 1, goes, one 2 goes to 2, 3. 2, 3, 2 goes to 3, but 3 goes to 1. So 2, 3 goes to 3, 1, which is the same as 1, 3. And 1, 3 goes to 2, 1. So these three edges go in a cycle. What about these? Well, 1, 4, the 4 is left alone. So 1 goes to 2, 2 goes to 3, 3 goes to 1. So those edges go in a cycle. So I can put anything I want on these three and anything I want on those three but they have to have the same values if they're going to be fixed under this. So there's four possibilities there, two times two. And finally, I have the four cycle. And if we look at the four cycle, let's see, one, two goes to two, three. Two, three goes to three, four. Three, four goes to four, one. And one, four, 1 goes to 2, and 4 goes to 1. So it comes back like that. So there's one cycle of length 4. What about 1, 3? Well, 1, 3 goes to 2, 4, and 2, 4 goes to 1, 3. So these six elements break up into two cycles. And so we have a choice of plus or minus on each of those. And so again, we have 4. Now, Remember that the sum in Burnside is the sum over the, all the elements in G. What that means is that when we sum this up, we're going to get 164. We're going to get six sixteens, which is 96. 
So let's let's keep this. It's 64 plus 96 plus 48, 3 times 16, plus 32, plus 24. And if we add all this up, we get 64 plus 32 is 96. So we get 96 from these two. We get 96 from that one. So that's two 96s. And then we have a 48 and a 24. And this is all divided by the order of the group, which is 24. So 96 is 4 times 24. So this works out to be 4 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1, which is 8 plus 3, which is 11. So there are 11 different um, graphs on four vertices up to the action of symmetry. And if you're curious to see what they are, you can look on the Wikipedia page for Burnside's lemma, and they're drawn there for you. Or you can try to figure them out. Buried in this calculation are um, some hints as to how you might be able to work them out. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to stop here.